It's common to feel overwhelmed as a software engineer, especially when you are more junior. We have so much to do, we have so much to learn, we have bugs creeping out left and right, and we have features to develop. Today I want to talk about some tips and practices that I personally use that help me and my various teams to become more effective at managing our time, writing better code, and generally not feeling so stressed about work. Hi everyone, I am Johan, and before we dive into general tips, let's talk about foundational knowledge. If you want to be effective, you need to know your foundations. There are no two ways around it. That includes tools, patterns, language constructs. You need to know your IDE shortcuts, macros, how do you refactor code with your IDE, how do you manipulate files and code within files. Learn how your source code and project management tools work, GitHub and others, Kanban, bug tracking, deployment tools, task scheduling, and all of these other tools that you'll be using every single day. You need to know those very well. Don't look at the documentation every time you need to do something basic. I recommend that you learn basic Linux terminal commands like grep, cat, find, all of this stuff, and at least one, if not two, Linux-based text editors. It's very useful when you have to connect to some server somewhere, run some jobs, or edit some config files on a remote desktop or remote machine. I recommend that you learn common programming patterns. We use those all the time. Singleton, composition and inheritance, publish, subscribe, message queues, caching, mutex, and threads, lambdas, callback, and delegates. Okay, these are just an example. There are many others, but understand and be able to manipulate these programming patterns very, very easily. Okay. I recommend that you are familiar with at least a few common languages and their constructs. For example, Java, Python, JavaScript, and SQL. You'll be using them all the time, especially if you're a web developer or working on a web stack or an app developer. Or even if you don't know some of these languages that you need to work with, you will be able to quickly adapt to other languages because you can recognize the patterns and constructs like map, list, set, arrays, function, classes, and all of those things from one language to the next. So you want to jump from Java to C Sharp, quickly figure out your bearings by, okay, how this is how I write a class, this is how a function works, this is how a coroutine works, and this is how an enum works, and stuff like that. And with experience building various types of projects, you will learn more and more building blocks and patterns across the stack that will allow you to quickly build new software. And you can speed that up by having at least some surface knowledge of a lot of those bricks by continuously reading and learning new stuff. And if you have some spare time, I highly recommend that you consider building mini projects to try them out. I still do this routinely, even though I've been building and selling software for the last 20 years. And you can see in my recent video about how I learned React and Firebase by making a small game in three days. As software engineers, we have to create a mental model of the code and project we are working on. Typically, that means that we need to remember the area of the code and its vicinity that we are working on, the general architecture of the product or the project, the APIs we need to use, the desired updated architecture after we make our changes, the requirements of what we need to build, and a lot of other stuff. That also includes the language that we are using and obviously the tools that I was mentioning earlier. It's not uncommon to switch between IDEs and languages multiple times throughout a sprint. And so, Building that mental model in order to reach a state where you become productive takes a long time. That's why interruptions and context switching can really kill your productivity. And you should respect your focus time as much as possible. First, don't hesitate to block your calendar, formally or not, for dedicated production time. You want to schedule that time for yourself, but also for others to know that you don't want to be disturbed during that period. I recommend chunks of three to four hours, which are the best. If you only have two hours, so be it, but at least block it off. Silence your phone, close your chat groups and emails, try to avoid interruptions, which will lead to context switch. I understand it can be hard to go uh, dark for four hours, especially if you're in a more senior position and you are you know, constantly interrupted by your teammates, but I recommend finding natural breakpoints to context switches. When your code is building, when your tests are running, when you just came back from a lunch break, Whatever, before you jump back in the zone, spend 15 to 20 minutes to clear your emails, answer some very quick chat queries, review some code, or read some documents. Managing the flow of information is really important, and 
Personally, I'm an inbox zero kind of person, so I can quickly see which emails are important since there are not that many of them out there. And as for chat, at Google, we have a no halo culture where we should not hesitate to ask people to directly send their question rather than say hi, then wait for me to reply hi, and then they finally send a question, and then I have to read and parse it and then reply. Uh, it's a waste of time for everybody. Just say hi, here's my question directly in one message. It won't be multiple times and I can quickly see everybody's questions like piling up and I can decide which one to prioritize based on that. And uh, that reduces the amount of interaction that I have to go through. So it might feel rude, but actually it helps a lot. So don't hesitate to remind people of that simple trick. One final area I recommend is learn how to read quicker. Speed reading, speed reading is awesome. You can figure out what is relevant to you and what is not at a glance. You don't need to read every letter of every word from every document and try to understand every single sentence. Most documents are just there to keep you informed. Others are there to learn new stuff. Others are there to require your undivided attention. Let's say you're doing a design review or something like this. Figure out which doc is which and do not treat them all the same way. Treat them with different level of attention and different level of uh, precision in your reading. That will help tremendously. I review hundreds of documents every quarter design, uh, UX documents, UX research, product vision, product management, and stuff like this. And if I were to read every single word, I would just die. There's just so much. For time estimates, we all know that providing accurate time estimates is one of the hardest tasks that we have to do, and we all do a terrible job at it. One way to help with estimation is to understand where our time is spent and how much production time we actually have in a sprint or in a week. Of course, depending on your seniority and responsibilities, your breakdown will vary, but I like to take an average of 70 to 30 model. That means that you should aim to spend 70% of your time on production related tasks and spend 30% of your time on collaboration and growth. Uh, this breakdown is at the weekly or sprint level, depending on whatever works for you. So what do I mean by production related tasks? Writing and submitting code, reviewing other people's code, writing, reviewing design documents. All of this, whether it's your own stuff or reviewing and, and uh, other people's stuff, it contributes to the general velocity of your team and effectiveness of every engineer because they get unblocked. They don't have to wait two days to get their code reviewed and submitted. So don't forget that if we are all timely at reviewing each other's code and documents, we all move faster as a team. Now the remaining 30% of the time, should be spent in meetings and other kinds of coordination, sync-ups, stand-ups, other one-on-ones, or other company contributions like talks, uh, attending talks, or organizing talks, and of course, interviewing. Uh, very important, also always allocate some time for self-improvement. I mentioned earlier, learning, you never stop learning, you should never stop learning as an engineer. Uh, and the more you learn, the more you read, the more you learn, the more you explore, uh, the better you become, the more effective you become. So never lose that learning time. Don't get so engrossed in a project or so down or uh, in the rabbit hole that you forget to take 10 or 20% or it, depending on how much time you have in like reading something new uh, or learning a new piece of tech. The last point I'd like to discuss is about managing ambiguity. As a software engineer, we are often thrown into a problem having to figure out the solution. Solution is often not obvious and top of it, our priorities and goalposts might just shift halfway through the implementation. We have to learn to adapt and adjust quickly. Trajectory, adjust the code, whatever. You need to be able to also get started and make decisions with a partial picture. It's very, very hard, especially when the code is complex, the product is complex, the stack is complex. You'll be missing pieces. It's just too big. You have to figure out how to get started, how to explore or do feasibility studies to figure out some of the missing pieces and the general direction of your project, and then just go. Uh, of course, depending on the criticality of the project, you, let's say you're launching a rocket to space, you will want to know everything because you can't change anything once the rocket is in space. But for software, we are building software. We should be able to adjust, adapt. We should be more flexible. We are not building hardware. Okay, So remember this, we should be able to be flexible. Otherwise, you, you build hardware where you have like six months, nine months lead times, a waterfall model, all of these things because changing hardware is very hard and very expensive. So you can verify your assumptions early by doing a quick prototype. You can do a feasibility study, try to avoid the churn so that you, the churn so that you, have, you don't have to rewrite your code so many times. But 
don't hesitate to get started when you find that you have enough information to get started. Don't wait for all the information to be available before you get started. Don't hesitate to ask questions or feedback from your tech leads and peers. Even on Stack Overflow, sometimes you might get some pieces of answers, but not as a crutch, but more as a way to validate the general approach or the general direction before you get too deep into the wrong direction. Always take notes about what's being said uh, that pertains to your work, whether it's on paper or on, on documents uh, during design discussions and other kind of discussions at the company level. That product vision is very important because you make these decisions all the time and knowing that these decisions are aligned with the vision will help you a lot. Uh, a lot of information is often thrown at you at once and you will not remember it all. So take time to write it down, study it later, uh, and of course, uh, bounce it back with other people if you're not sure about you know, what has been said or why it was done that way or why the priorities are done that way. Track your progress, whether it's on notes, uh, snippets, whatever you use, uh, it's good for yourself, it's good for your teammates and your managers, and you can also do some retrospectives at the end of the project to understand your own shortcomings. Like why did the deadline slip? Uh, were there any unexpected roadblocks that you could have avoided by doing a bit more studying at the beginning of the project and stuff like that? And that will help you become better over time by understanding your own shortcomings and learning from them. It's not a way to blame each other, uh, try to be in the blameless culture environment, but it's just you can do it yourself, like introspective uh, about your own project, or you can do it as a team. That also works quite well. One final tip I'd like to share is you should try to accomplish something every day. Attempt to make progress towards your bigger goal. So can be code related by you know writing some feature code or refactoring or code cleanup or reviewing code, reviewing designs, writing a design doc, writing a one-pager retrospective about the project that just happened or the release that was failed and then why and, and stuff like that. Identify one about mid-size, you know, half day at most uh, chunk that you would like to really do today and try not to leave until you've done it. That's the way I work. I always have something I want to do. Sometimes I don't know the day before, I just know the day itself based on what happened at the night because I work with remote sites between the US and Singapore. So sometimes overnight stuff happen. So I have to react, remember managing, uh, being flexible and stuff. Uh, but always try to have something identified for the day that you want to do. So, and that will help you prioritize the work and prioritize the interruptions. It can be small, it can be sizable, do not make it too big or it will not fit. All right, that was a lot of content here. There is more where it came from, so there will be more videos around this. I hope you can use some of those tips and best practices to improve yourself, your code and generate the velocity of your, your team. Uh, let me know in the comments if you implemented any of those practices. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps me tremendously and I helps you keep you informed when new videos are posted on the channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.